Hi everyone, Carrie Finnell here on Live with Prima. Um, today we're doing a show on uh, New Year's Eve. Um, I decided to do the show during the day, well mainly because the show did not cooperate with us on Tuesday, so I apologize for that. But um, instead of doing it tonight when everyone's celebrating or, you know, gathering around with their, their friends and family for one last hurrah uh, for the end of 2015, um, you know, we were just not going to do a show tonight. So we're doing it today during the day, and I'm here to talk to you about Prima's brand new watercolor confections. These are amazing, okay? And I'm not just saying that because I work for Prima, but these are fantastic. They're little pans, little pan paint sets. And you can see that we, they come in three different um, varieties. And the first one is called the Classics, which has all the basic colors. Uh, the second one is Decadent Pies. So Decadent Pies, this is actually a metallic set. So all the colors that you see on your on the box are all in uh, metallics, and they're really fun. They're not overly shimmery, just a little bit of shimmer, which I think is perfect for watercoloring. And then we have another one called Tropicals. So Tropicals has a lot of the brighter colors, they're very vibrant, you know, a little bit more um, vibrant than the classics, okay? They are going to be released uh, in winter 2016, uh, January, the, for the CHA trade show. Um, I'm going to put those aside just for a second because I want to show you the tin. Now this will give you an idea of the size and what it will look like once you open it up. So you can see you get this beautiful little tin and you have a couple different mixing trays in the tin. Then you get these beautiful little um, cubes of color. Okay, and these are the little pants. This is highly, highly concentrated uh, pigmented watercolor paints. So a very little goes a long way. And then they're wrapped when you get them, like just like candies, because they're called confections. So you unwrap them, and then you have a full tray of beautiful pigments. All right, let's open another one here. I think this is the Classics. Uh, as you can see, I've used these. These are the uh, metallics, so the decadent pies. You see those? So look how dark they are. So once you start taking the color out of the pan and working it with it with water, the color comes to life. Uh, let me just show you real quick. And I'm actually going to be using today, not that one, because that one's empty, um, the Prima water brush sets. Um, these are awesome for water coloring with because you have the water right in the cylinder of the pen and of course you get two different the sizes in the same set so I'm just gonna like put a little water there and I'm gonna grab this guy here and you can see just taking just barely touching down on the pan um, just creates all that color so this is where your mixing is gonna be and your palette and then you just go from there uh, it's really, these are really, really fun. So again, these are the decadent pies. These are the metallic ones. And then the third one is, this is the tropicals. So again, handy little tin, flips open, and you have your colors. And this is how they're going to come wrapped. So just to give you an idea, you know, of, of the size, you know, I'm going to put it in my hand. So you can see they're just little, cute little squares. But man, do they pack a lot of color. Um, I believe a set is going to retail for about $24.99 uh, for U.S. dollar. Um, they're very high quality. They're very highly pigmented. These will last you forever. So it is a little bit of an investment for you, but I think it's totally worth it. And the results have been amazing when I've used these. Okay, so we're going to get started just with a couple of techniques and cards. Um, just start out with some fun, easy ones, and then we'll keep going from there. Okay, so let's see. We have, uh, let's see, I have my my brush. I'm going to be using Prima's um, watercolor pad. These, this is 140-pound cold-pressed watercolor paper. Um, the number on this is 847746, and we actually came out with a variety of paper sizes um, when we release these. So this happens to be the eight and a half, eight and a half by 11 inch uh, pad. And I just cut them in half to make the standard size A2 cards, okay? I also happen to cut up 
So like here's the card, for instance, and here I've already pre-stamped some things. But I also made just little cards, and these um, are going to fit on the front of a card, so to speak, just like that. So this is actually uh, four inches by five and a quarter, so it fits on there just perfectly. Okay, so my first technique that I wanted to show you guys, which is a real simple one, and it's really fun. I just got a square acrylic block, okay, and I went in and grabbed some, some color. And I'm just going to mix it in my pan, and I'm just going to add it right directly to the block. I know, it seems kind of funny, huh? This is probably the least dirty block that I have. I will tell you, that's the truth. Okay, I'm going to switch color. Now I'm going to go to this really pretty like salmon color right here and mix that in. Oops, I got a little bit of green in it, so just don't pay any attention to that. Sometimes that happens. I get a little carried away and I keep moving on. Okay, so that salmon color is there. And then I might go a little in with a little bit of this umber here just to mix them together. These colors can be mixed to make your own colors, by the way. And then I'm going to go in with this beautiful darker kind of brick red. And I can even touch down and make it really intense. The more you touch down on the little, on the little square, the more intense your color can be. So you can make it as light or as dark as you want. And on this block, I've got, you know, my variation of colors. So sometimes, you know, people can prime the paper first, which you just want to add like a, a little bit of a spritz just to kind of get it ready. And I'm going to very quickly turn it over and I'm going to go directly to my paper and squish down on this block. This is actually really, really fun. Okay, so you see like the colors are just kind of starting to vary a little bit. And some of them are kind of stuck in place, and some of them are just already kind of wicking out. And what you can do is just add just a little bit more spritz to it just to keep it working. You know, keep it blending. You can turn the paper from side to side, do drips, whatever you like. Okay, and once and that's it. I mean, you don't have to think about this too much. You don't have to go too crazy. You can go crazy if you want to. You can certainly go back to your pans and touch down in places and let watch the color really kind of intensify. Okay, just like that. And just kind of have fun with it. Um, another thing that I like to do is go back. You can even add like interesting color, you know just something a little bit different, but I like to kind of keep it to three. I think that's perfect. And I am wiping off my brush in between the applications just to kind of clean it off because like I said before, the pigmentation is so intense that, um, you know, it's going to stay on your brush. So if you're using a regular water brush or any brush, you're going to be dipping it into water anyway. Okay, I'm just going to dry this really quick. Now, a lot of people like to take the watercolor paper and tape it down to their surface because I noticed what it does do is it kind of buckles in the middle and that's just the natural reaction that the paper has to water and that's totally normal. All right, and you can see that I've got some variation, some spots. This will dry pretty quickly. And once you dry it, you can even go back in with like a whole new layer if you want to. So I'll just show this up close so you can see. Like it's just kind of messy and it blended and it's just, you know, kind of freehand. So next what I'm going to do is just kind of trim this down. Maybe. I think I need a new blade on my <clears throat> on my trimmer. Probably do. This is my old trimmer that I've had forever. And I keep buying new trimmers and then I go back to my favorite. I don't know why. So then I'm just going to kind of tear this along the bottom. Just like that. So now I have a really cute piece. 
Let's see. And then I'm going to take my card base, which again is just the watercolor paper. Or you can use um, white colored cardstock or even pattern paper for this if you like. I'm just going to make a nice crease. And then what I wanted to do, which I'll put this aside just for a second. Um, I wanted to go back in with some of that darker color, that darker brick red. And I'm going to add just some spatters to the card. Because I just think it adds a little bit of interest and coolness. Coolness, that's a word. Okay, I'm going to zap this dry real fast. So I just tapped my brush with something kind of hard, you know. And the bigger the taps, like the harder, the bigger the splashes, and the smaller, the smaller the splashes, of course. So I just kind of want to make sure this was dry, because when I start building the card, I don't want to smear it with my fingers, which is something I would totally do. Okay. I'm going to hold this up in just a second, and hopefully it will show up on camera. Did you see all those fun little splatters everywhere? So that's what it did, and that's all I wanted. Let's see. You know what I might do is just kind of focus in on what I'm doing. There we go. All right. So that really cute little piece that I made before is going to go right here. And I took Prima's um, one of this is from Anna's collection. This is one of her butterfly stamps, and it says uh, "Dare to Spread Your Wings." Um, let's see, the number on this is 962098, and I just used my archival go-to ink. This is called Potting Soil. Now hopefully I will stamp this so that it's not crooked. There we go. There we go. So I've got my butterfly on there, and I just took some jute twine, the Prima jute twine, in the wheat color, and I know I have an end here somewhere. Oh, maybe I don't. Well, here it is, hiding at the top. Okay. So watercolor cards are all the rage right now, and I think, not just cards, but anything watercolor, and I think that you are going to be really, really happy with these little sets of pans because the color, um, the variety of colors, the pigment, the ease of use is all right there for you. And you're going to feel like, you know, a watercolor expert. Oh gosh, I cannot get this. Jute twine, the bane of my existence. Well, it's actually my nails too. My nails are way too long. Uh, they grow super fast and I need to just clip them off because um, I can't type or tie bows with long nails. It's crazy. Okay, so I just kind of tied it around that card and I added a little bit of some foam tape. And I'm just going to stick that right onto the card and it'll be done. I didn't really need to add a sentiment because the stamp itself self has a kind of a sentiment on it, a real cute one. It says, Dare to Spread Your Wings. So it's a little bit of an encouragement card for a friend or someone you know, and that is it. That's so easy, and it looks really, really cute. Let's see if I can. Okay. So that that's it. I mean, that was a pretty simple card. You can see what I did was so easy. Um, here's the original card. So you can see the variations. Like I didn't fill in as much on this one. I kind of let the two lighter tones of pink and red run together with green. So you can have it as intense as you want or as light as you want. And I think that you could just sit down and make a bunch of these cards they have on hand for friends or loved ones um, that just need a little bit of encouragement or someone who's like really accomplished something really special. Okay, <clears throat> so moving on. Moving, moving on. Let's see, what do I have in store for you next? Ah, okay, so I think what I'm going to do is show you how I did this card. Now, this card is pretty fun, and I'm actually, it's going to take a few steps because I kind of um, 
wandered upon this very much just by experimenting and trying different things. Okay, so what I did first, um, I'd actually taken uh, one of the Prima dies and I cut it with watercolor paper. And you can see it here. So it was really fun. So I'm going to just kind of show you how I did that. So I took the, I don't have the die with me. I'm sorry. I don't know what the number is. Oh, oh well. Can't be awesome all the time, right, guys? Okay. So what I did is I grabbed just a couple colors. And yeah, that's the side. I'm just going to prime it again with a little bit of water. And with the water brush, I grabbed this really beautiful blue. And you can see how intense that is. And I just kind of touched down on this and just started adding the color little by little. I mean, you can just brush it on. You can dab it on, whatever you want right but it's a pretty delicate um, dye so you know you don't want to put you know brush too hard because then you know it's gonna break and stuff once it gets wet so just be careful okay and I'm gonna get rid of that blue I'm gonna go back to this green and just start adding that as well so and I'm I am going right up color to color because I want them to kind of blend and any white spots that I see I'll just kind of fill in with whatever Okay, so this is kind of pretty. I know you're probably like, where is she going with this? I don't know. You'll have to see. Okay. I'm going with a little more blue over here. So, and it's cool because actually these two colors mixed together make kind of this dusty blue. And that's a really nice kind of transition color of the two mixed together. So, you know, you don't mind having that. So then I picked it up and I was like, oh, that's really pretty. And there was like all this here, which I know is kind of hard to see. So what I did is I took just that four and a quarter or five and a quarter by four piece. I'm going to just kind of get a little water on it, especially in the middle. That's really where I want it. And I just kind of laid it flat on top of the work surface that I had. And I was like, I'm not going to waste the color. So, see, now there's a little bit on there. No, no worries. You can go back, pick it up again. It just depends on how much paint I used. So it's very light and airy, which I love. But I'm going to go back and just kind of drip some more of this color around and I'm going to be very kind of sporadic with it okay and I'm letting them kind of run together which is fine doesn't have to be perfect and you can just kind of tilt the card a little bit if you notice a lot of pooling you can just kind of dab it with a little bit of a um, paper towel and I can even go in with some more intense color direct from the pan and bring it wherever I need it wherever I wanted just a little bit more color so you see I'm really really messy when you start to overthink stuff like this is when you start to get results that you're not gonna like um, I, I noticed that with mine um, I was starting to overthink it because I was like, okay, I want to show some cool techniques and I've seen people do this all over and it's so cool and, but just be messy with it and just grab and go. And I'm just kind of going all over the place with this color. Now, even the color that's on there, you can drag it out a little bit to the far corners where it didn't blend or go and just kind of pull that water around with your brush. And that's it. So I'm going to hold this up in just a second, but I'm going to dry it first because it's very drippy and it needs to dry. And see, as soon as you touch down on it with the paper towel, it's going to immediately take the color right off. And in some cases, that's fine, especially if you have like a little oopsie or there's a blob that you don't like. 
but um, for the most part, you don't need to. And it's going to take a minute to dry because it got super wet. And you'll notice that when you dry it, it dries much lighter than it did when you first start, which is fine with me. If you want to, you can dry this and then go, like, re it and go back with even more intense color. That's totally up to you. Okay. So next, what I'm going to do is a little bit of that splatter effect again. I think adds a lot of dimension and a lot of fun. I'm going to hold this up because I realize that it's really hard for you to see. Can you guys kind of see the splatters and how the color just kind of wicked in together and it wasn't, you know, perfect and so I hope you can. I hope you can see it. But you'll have to try these out for yourself because they're really, really fun. Okay. So next, oh wait, let me just dry it a little bit more. I think some of my splatters are wet. And like I said, I don't want to smear. You shouldn't be heating on your craft mat like I am, so don't do it. Uh -huh. but like I said, sometimes for the sake of the show, you know, we just have to keep going, but that's all right. My craft mat will be fine. Okay, so there's my base. Now, I know that Sharon showed you guys um, our brand new um, adhesive rub-ons that we have coming out. Now they look yellowy and that's because there's glue. Um, and I can't tell you how much fun I'm having with these. So I'm going to pull the whole thing out and I want to use this butterfly right here. So I'm just going to cut that out. So, when you take the backing off, um, maybe if you can get the backing off, so now you've exposed glue. So I'm going to stand up for this so I can try to, well it still feels a little bit, nah, yeah, it's okay. So I'm going to try to center that as best I can. Some people would draw grids or things like that to make sure it's even and you know that's okay so I don't know if many of you know this but on your Prima Distress tool there are two little beveled edges on the handle those are actually meant for rub-ons so if you want and you want really good pressure this is what I recommend using so there's a larger beveled edge and a smaller one depends on how big your rub ons are. But this really does the trick beautifully. Okay. So now I'm going to carefully peel this off to expose the glue. And there it is. Yeah, it's a little crooked. That's okay. And then I have the new Prima foil. Which you can see a sheet of it right here. Uh, and I'm going to lay that on very carefully. And I'm just going to kind of use my fingers just to kind of burnish. And you can use this again, but very, very lightly. Like you don't need to put a ton of pressure on it. You just want to make sure you cover the whole image with the foil. And then it's on there, which it looks like it is. You can even use a um, bone folder or something like that. And then you're going to carefully peel that back. And see, you can see the negative on the foil. You see that? And there's my butterfly. How cool is that? And it looks like store-bought, expensive kind of stationery that's been printed on. And next what I did is I grabbed, um, I have this set by Anna. It's her, one of her cling stamp sets. Um, the number on this is 962067. And it's called Now is the Right Time. It's in the packaging upside down because I've been using it. And I grabbed the little words out of here. It says, um, Create Magic, of course. Right. Put this aside. Put that on there. And 
then I just kind of went through my chalk inkers and Farmer Jean happened to work really well with the blue that I was working and I'm just going to lightly ink that up. You don't want to smash your um, edge, just your um, anchor into your stamp because it will be a blob when you're done. Okay, now I'm going to stamp, create magic. Hopefully it turned out. It's not too crooked. Eh, it's not half bad. There we go. Okay. And again, I'm going to fight with this cute string. Give myself a generous amount. And I just wrap this around the card a couple times. Um, maybe one more time for good luck, huh? Sorry, I haven't been reading the chat at all. I'm, tr I'm trying to fit like 10 pounds of stuff in a five pound bag today with the show. So I uh, have not really looked up much. I'm just kind of creating and showing and sharing and I hope that's okay. All right. If you guys need me for anything, Delena is modding for me today, so she can always uh, send me a quick text if you if you have a question. Okay, and again, I'm going to make my card base, and then you're just going to glue that down, and that's your card. Here's my original. Looks like my my paint was a little more intense. So I probably went back into the water and really kind of added more pigment. So you can see, and my spatters are nice and dark. And I probably, yeah. So I went, I went a little crazier with the color, but I played with it. You can see it all kind of ran together. That beautiful foil butterfly just makes the card look like a million bucks. So there we go there. Okay, so while I was showing you, See how like this is a little bit lighter than what I ended up with. That's okay. Uh, it's probably not a good idea to get my jute in my paint. But I just kind of went back in and went back into the where those intense colors were to intensify them even more. So you can go back, you can change it, you can you know keep adding color. Um, these little pans just carry so much of a you know so much. Uh, I don't even know what I'm trying to say. But they, they carry a, a punch. I think that's what I'm trying to say. So there you go. You can just keep going back, intensifying it, adding more in. Just kind of being careful though, right? All right. So I'm going to put this over here. And again, today's all about watercolor, easy watercolor cards, right? Oh, here's one already done. So you can put that right on your card. It's stinking cute. And we can just kind of use a, uh, well, I guess, I guess I'll use my tape. My glue is not behaving well at all, so I didn't even bring it downstairs, which is fine. So normally I wouldn't use this sticky tape for this. I would use glue or maybe even foam tape or something. I'm not concerned about the center because, um, I am going to cover that with a flower. But this is another just quick, easy, fun card to do. And I'll show you how. So I've got that on my card front. And I'm going to take, um, these are lush flowers. Let's see. Oh, I'm sorry, Kindled. And this is called Barrel. It's 581435. And these are, these are pretty big. These are, um, dimensional flowers and I'm just going to make just a pretty this card I could give to my mom for Mother's Day I think she would love it I do and again I'm just gonna use that let's see I'll use foam tape no I won't use foam tape because the flower is pretty big okay so I'm just gonna use Frank's artisan adhesive this is way too big of a piece this stuff is like industrial strength two-sided tape. It will hold just about anything on here. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of wad that up in the center and stick my flower down. Okay. And then what I'm also going to do 
Let's see. I guess I don't really have a sentiment I want to put on here, but I could. And then I just have some green leaves. And these are, these kind of match the, just tuck them in. Like so. And there you have a card with a pretty flower. And that's very simple. You can stamp a little sentiment right here. It's just an idea to use the doilies in a watercolor fashion to make a really gorgeous card. Okay, and that's it. Another easy solution for card making. All right, now the last one that I did, well actually, oh, I wanted to show you another foil butterfly one. And this one I let the color just kind of drip down the card and I really mixed it well and added water, added the splatters and then the foil butterfly and it says now is the right time. So another encouragement card for friends and I just put it on a, a white um, watercolor base. So it's really kind of a pretty card and again just use the this is another butterfly that from the rub-ons the uh, adhesive rub-ons and I use more of the gold foil. And that was that. The color I used for the sentiment um, it, which matched perfectly is called brick wall. So I just inked it up and stamped it with that. You could use a brown ink or maybe even a dark green or something that would work really well. So that was just another card idea I had to throw at you. And this is the card that I made um, using, now uh, this takes a little bit more time and patience um, because there's a little more detail to it of course. So this card I created using Jamie's uh, floral stamps. And they come in a set of three. And it's just, well, it's actually just called floral. Let's see. And the number on this is 980313. And I use the medium flower for this. Okay. And I'll show you what I did. Even though I have one pre stamped, but I just kind of wanted to show you guys anyway. Oh my gosh, my hands are dirty. Make sure your hands are nice and clean. All right. So. Use the bone folder on my, oh yeah, oh yeah, just getting dirt all over the place. It doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, so I used, you want to use a, an ink that can handle being wet. You want like a permanent ink, and again, the archival ink or stays on ink will work really well. Again, this is the potting soil one by uh, Ranger. And I just wanted to ink up that flower. And I stamped it twice. So I stamped it off the card a little bit, both images. To me, it just kind of is pleasing to the eye that way. And I'll do the second one. And I'll do it right about here. So I got my, you know, I got that inked up pretty well. All right. So again, here's. Here's one I already did. Okay. Now, more intensified color. And we're going to use our little sets here and our water brushes. I'm going to make sure this is clean because I'm going to a totally different color palette than I was with the, with the uh, blue and the green. Okay. So what you want to do with your clean brush and a little, oh, that's not clean. Oh, I'm just going to switch brushes. Let's see, is this one clean? Oh, yep, okay. I am a hot mess right now. So with a little bit of water, you're just going to kind of trace over your flower. And you want to do like one flower at a time and work in your small area. No worries if it soaks into the paper. Like you can always go back and, and add a little bit more. Okay. So now I'm going to go for that, that beautiful... Um, kind of like a coral red okay just and I'm just gonna kind of touch down and just give it light even swipes and I can even press the water from my brush and I'm just gonna carry it up and through the flower just like this okay so now if you want to do some shading what you could do is go back to the original color and just kind of dab it in with a little bit of water 
and just let the water do the work by intensifying. I'm sorry if there's a glare. <clears throat> but just let the water do the work and you can kind of move the card around a little bit. You can take some of that color and bring it up over here and up in here too. And just I'm gently pressing a little bit more water out as I go. Just a little bit. Okay. So there's one. That's it. Don't overthink it. Do not overthink it. Okay. And I'm going to go in and get this one kind of wet. Now my brush is dirty because I've already been adding that red and that's okay. Because I'm just going to take that color and keep moving it across the flower. Okay, and adding a little water as I go, just to kind of keep bringing it across, just like this. Now this bottom portion is nice and wet. I can go back in, a little more intense color, and just kind of dot the color down in there. Just again for some shading. Now could I go direct to the pan itself? Yes. The color is going to be like, whoa, okay, because that's really, really concentrated. But let's say you want it to be really dark and, and really cool, just barely touch down. And like I said, let the water kind of do the magic. Just let it do the work for you. Okay. Now, it's okay if it goes outside the lines a little bit. I'm not concerned. Not concerned at all. Um, up here, you can add a little more water and just kind of bring more of that color up if it's a little too light. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to dry this real quick if you don't mind. You want to dry in between the colors in this case because you are coloring something kind of specific. And it's okay to let the colors blend, but if you're going for, you know, a different... Um, shade and you really want it to stand out, it's best to kind of just dry it before you move on. Because what I want to do is I want to do some, some yellow and maybe a deeper blue within here and I don't want them getting all muddy because they will mud up. They will mud up a little bit. Alright, so now I'm going to clean that brush off again. And like I said, I'm going to go in with kind of like a yellow. So here's like a real pretty uh, mustard yellow. Can you see that? Probably can't see that right there. And I just wanted to kind of, again, I'm just touching down with my brush. I'm not squirting out a lot of water. I'm barely touching the paper. And I'm just kind of bringing that into the world of the red. Okay. And I'm going to dry this. Sorry for the heat gun noise. Okay. Now I'm going to actually go with a cool tone, and that's some of that blue, which I really love that blue. I don't know why, but, and again, I just kind of wanted to put it around the areas where it looks like there's like little seeds or little bits of the flower that need to be just maybe that much darker okay and this is all play like I you know kind of played around with these I've been having a ton of fun and experimenting um, there we go so that just added a little bit of um, contrast and beauty to the inside of the flower can you guys see that okay. Again, I'm going to dry this. Now, you're probably wondering, well, once it's dry, can you go back and fix it or change it? And you absolutely can. Absolutely. Um, it's going to show layers of color, which is fine. Okay, I'm squirting water into my pan. I'm getting some of that green out. Now, what I did, just so you know, I colored the background with a little bit of that intense green. I started from one corner and kind of worked my way around. Now down here, some of that red got into the green 
and it made like kind of a brownish green color, which I love. That was beautiful. It's fine. But I wanted to have it intense around certain areas, and then I just brought the color over. So that's what I'm hoping to do now. All right. And I don't need to wet the paper per se. So I'm just going to drag that color out, and I can squeeze some water out as I go. Now there's a little red blob up in here. That's okay. I'm not really concerned about that. I can kind of go over it with some more of the green and blend that in a little bit. If it bothers you, you know, before you dry it, you could dab it off, of course. Okay, there's a red blob in the middle of my flower. I have no idea how it got there. Do you see that right there? Ugh. I'm not going to worry about that right now. So you see where like all this color will show up really, really intensely. And, uh, add like a whole new shade or you know things like that to it so I'm just kind of working this out I'm not rubbing on the paper too much because I don't want the paper to get super pilled up or anything like that if you're working with a really good paper you sh it shouldn't okay now I'm just gonna take some water and I'm dragging it across the card not being careful I'm not really going back for any more color. I'm just using what I have. And you can see how far this will go. Now I might squirt just a little water over here, just in case the card is a little dry. And I want that intensity. So you're going to keep going back in where you want some shading. Like, if it's nice and wet, the shading shouldn't be a problem. See? And then you can kind of add water and whip that out a little bit. There we go. Again, you're letting the water do some of that work for you. So, don't overthink it. Don't overdo it. It'll be fine. Okay. Now, I added a lot of color. I'm going to just keep dragging it out and just creating variations. Now, let's say that I don't want as much color down here. You can go back with a paper towel and just gently like kind of dab it, dab it away and it's going to lighten up. See how that looks so nice. Now this guy up here is really bothering me. I don't know that I'm going to be able to, <laughs> to go in and really fix it. Um, so my solution for something like that is to actually just kind of bring more color in it might still show up a little bit. You know, you're going to be mad at yourself for it later because you're like, darn it, I didn't want that there. You know, but you can certainly kind of play around with it and add a little bit more color like it was supposed to be there and just kind of blend it in. It's no, no big deal. And then, you know, just kind of, there we go. So easy, right? And I can kind of go around. Now, I'm going to dry this real quick. I hope everybody's still watching. If you can't, that's okay. Okay. So again, I have that weird red spot right here. Okay, so here is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go in real intense with that green and really kind of blend that out and try to make it look a lot less, you know, obvious. But again, it's a, it's a watercolor card. Things like that are going to happen and don't worry about it. You know, I was being a little sloppy because of the show, but I don't care. The next step I did was uh, just kind of put some stems in. So I can go lightly with the water to kind of draw it in 
with my paintbrush so I can give myself a little guide. Or you can do this with um, a pencil. And I'm just going to kind of carefully go in and very lightly just kind of retrace that watermark. Again, if you're not too confident with this part, you can always grab a pencil and erase it later. But it's just stems, just a couple of stems. And that's all I did. Now, if I wanted to darken them up a little bit, I can go in with a little bit of brown and add that right into the where the green is, but not too much, just to give them a little contrast. Just like that. Okay. I'm going to dry those up. I'm going to hold this up for you guys in just a second. Okay. So you see that they're not perfect. They're not beautiful. They're just little stems. They're not supposed to, you know, be that way. I, they was wet. And that's okay. That's that's perfect for me I think okay so next what I did again I went with the, the adhesive rub-ons and she had Christine Yoff made these for us for Prima and she did one with all kinds of words and I know it's hard to see some of these because of um, you know the glare from the packaging no worries so I think I'm going to use the word believe because that's really really pretty and we're just going to put that on there real quick and then the card will be finished. Okay, again, trying to get this stuff off of here. I'm going to try to make sure that it's nice and even. Sort of. There we go. Okay, there's my word. I'm going to use my distress tool just to kind of get that down. Going over the word. Peel that up. Worked like magic. Uh, where did I put my gold foil? So you can see that I've used this piece a lot, like there's actually a lot of space. So I'm going to put down, I have a little space in the middle here, and I'm just going to put it down. You guys are going to be in love with these. You really are. I mean, because it just adds so much class and um, just a little bit of sparkle that you need. And makes it just pops right off the card. Like I am hooked. Like I hope she makes like lots of words because I will use these on my cards forever. Okay, I'm just making sure it's all down, just burnishing it, and then I'm gonna peel it off, and that's it. So there is my card. It says believe. What do you guys think? And here's my original card. Trust. Oh, I forgot one more step um, before I finish, finish. Might as well go all the way. Okay, so remember that blue I added to the middle of the flower? I'm just going to just do some flex on it because I just love how it looks. Okay, touch down. Really, really intense. There we go. Okay, now I think I like it. What do you think? Those little spots just add just a little bit of something. I know I kind of went crazy on those today, but I really like them. <sighs> so, uh, let's see, I'm going to check the... Okay, so that's it, you guys. That was That's today's class, and we had 10 minutes to go. But I hope that you really like what I showed you because I'm telling you these pans are wonderful. Um, one quick thing I will show you before I end the show actually just to kind of help you out a little bit. So you can see this really beautiful teal color over here. 
um, I actually took a couple of greens, like really intense greens. Okay, add some water. I'm going to pick up this green. Now it's really, really green. And then I went in with this super kind of cobalt blue. And I kept adding it until I got that teal color that I really, really love. And there it is. So you can basically just create your own palette. You can create your own your own colors. And I'll show you, like, there's the, there it is right there. So, and you can see with the water brush, like, I'm taking some water and I'm pressing it out as I go. And there you go. There's a background. Huh, how about that? You can kind of go in and. But like I said, don't overthink it, just do it. And you'll be able to just kind of create really fun things, really easy things, um, you know, as you go. But that's just a custom color. So you can go in and make your own colors from these sets. So even if you get a set and you want in another color, it's okay. You can mix, mix these together. Um, and everything fits. And these little guys come out too. So you see that. So... You see, I mean, I've used these a lot, but I mean, there's barely a dent in these and there's so much color packed into these little squares. And I love this little tray. I mean, it just, you know, flips up and you're ready to go. See? Little black case. There's a little handle in here. I don't know. So it's cool, huh? So compact, easy to take with you. I mean, you could take these anywhere and travel and watercolor to your heart's content. Okay. So I hope that you enjoyed today's show and you had a good time. And I really wish everyone a very happy new year. Either you're already enjoying the day or, you know, you're going to hit midnight tonight on the eve and celebrate. So I hope everyone's safe and happy. Uh, and you guys have a great time. The next show coming up is with Bona on Tuesday. Uh, so Bona will be here to share something fabulous. Um, she's turning in her project this weekend, so I don't have it to share yet. But, you know, Bona, she's always got great things. Then Robbie will be on Thursday night as well. So Bona on Tuesday the um, 5th. And then Robbie Herring will be on Thursday the 7th for, um, for some more Live with Prima fun. Okay? Oh, good. I'm glad you caught some of the class, too. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming. Um, I will uh, touch base with you all very, very soon. Happy New Year. Take care.